Hello, Dr. Tom Packer. Hello. So you are an expert on the US right and the history of American elections. Yep. Um, so who is going to win the a presidential election in the United States? Well, almost all presidential elections, to a certain degree of uncertainty. But having covered myself with that, I agree with almost all experts and think it's overwhelming. Joe Biden should be overwhelmingly favoured, right? Four, five, four to one. OK. And what by what percentage of the popular vote is Joe Biden going to win? Uh, if I had to guess, I would guess about eight or nine percent, but a significant deviation from that wouldn't surprise me. But he almost certainly, as long as he wins by more than three or four points, he's almost certainly going to win. And he'd have a good chance of winning if his margin was smaller. So, as I say, I'm pretty confident. And he could easily get a higher margin than that. People are underrating that chance that the polls might actually be slightly underrating him. Um, now, because last time the polls overrated um, Hillary Clinton by roughly two percentage points, yeah? Yeah. Is there? Is it likely that the same mistake is being made this time? Well, the reason why that happened, like, A, as you rightly said, it was quite a small deviation. So even if the same mistake did happen, Joe Biden would still win. But secondly, what happened last time was that they failed to weigh for education. So for the first time in US elections, people who went to university were much more, who are otherwise the same, so white, middle income, were much more likely to vote Democratic. And they had far too many people who had gone to university in their poll. And so that's why it went wrong. It was particularly concentrated in swing states where there's lots of white people who didn't go to university like Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. They're, they're most nearly all the pollsters have adjusted for that. There is some question that maybe President Trump does better among voters with low trust who might also refuse. But I don't think that's going to create anything more than a small help for Trump compared to the published polls. Um, how many votes do you need in the Electoral College to win? Um, uh, from memory, off the top of my head, it's 219, but I might be wrong, um, oh. to 220, but yes. Um, um, but a key point is, even though pre President Trump won quite a big margin last time, he the key states he won, which put him over the top, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, um, I think Florida, he only won by 1%. So all it requires is a very small movement in those states and otherwise identical result. And Mr. Biden is president. Um, so is there a serious chance that a lot of votes won't be counted? They come in after, um, you know, election day and somehow through voter suppression. So the Republicans will still keep the presidency. Um, I think the evidence is, I mean, voter suppression is obviously a very partisan term. The evidence is it doesn't happen much in America. So, <laughs> for example, there was a lot of talk about it in Georgia last time, and actually they had a record result. One interesting question is a lot of polling procedures have been changed for this election, generally given the reason given is COVID, and some of that has been done by state and federal judges. Now, the Constitution actually says the state legislature picks the electoral college delegates, the people from the different states who technically actually pick the president. And, that, and all the state, all of them create electoral rules for that. So there's some chance that in some of those states where the judges have changed the rules, the US Supreme Court will overturn that. So if the result's at all close, I expect there to be lots of suing, and it's possible some votes will be found to be illegally cast. But I, Mr. Biden is currently so far ahead, I think it's unlikely to affect the result. He would have to be, do a lot worse for that kind of thing to actually matter. I remember Bush's wafer-thin victory mm. in Florida in 2000, and the legal battles went on for about a month. Yeah. Are we likely to see legal battles which, which prevent a definitive winner being declared for about a month? If the result is close, such as in 2000, yes, possibly longer. Um, but if the result is what the polls currently show or a bit worse or a bit better for Mr. Biden, um, no, because even if those states, some states are disputed. So let's say that the same thing happens in Florida. But if, Pre if Biden has a majority electoral college anyway, it won't matter in the same way. So it won't delay mm -hmm. only because the result was so close that suing in one state could decide who won the election. So supposing um, Trump loses on the 3rd of November, he's president until the 20th of January. What do you think he'll do in the um, intervening two and a half months? Uh, I think most likely, like one of the, what about, well, the pre US president's a lot less powerful than people realise. But one huge power they do have is they can pardon essentially any offence under federal law. Mm -hmm. So I think he'll give a lot of pardons out. 
and he may well pardon quite a few of his associate, former associates who've been convicted of various crimes. So mm -hmm. if I was forced to guess, this is just a guess, I think he'll pardon or at least commute the service of Paul Manafort for tax fraud, for example. So he'll give off, it'll be, you may, you probably remember this, that in 2000, there were lots of scandals about the kind of pardons President Clinton did on his way out. Yeah, Mark war. Rich. And I think, yeah, exactly, for example, and I think it will be similar and possibly even bigger this time. I think that's the most important thing that's likely to happen. Um, before um, President Trump leaves office, assuming he loses the election. So you think Biden's going to win. Um, what are the reasons why Trump has lost it and why Biden's won it? I mean, a very good question. I mean, one reason is, of course, Mr. Trump only won very narrowly by the skin of his teeth last time, and that was against Hillary Clinton, who'd been a very, very unpopular with Democrats and to some degree swing voters for decades. So Joe Biden is a much more popular figure. Secondly, President Trump has always had quite low approval ratings for a president. Um, I think that's heavily to do not so much with his policies, but with his personal behaviour, the tweet storms, the scandals, the constant recognition, um, uh, squabbles around that. Thirdly, a lot of his appeal last time was the immigration issue. And as a case, even though immigration has fallen, he hasn't really delivered on that. And fourthly, this is my own view. And compared to most experts, I think campaigns matter more. Um, uh, so, for example, Gerald Ford in 76 was 20 points behind and nearly won after a brilliant campaign. I think President Trump's campaign has been very poor. And the two huge things that have happened over the last year, of course, coronavirus and Black Lives Matters. And whatever your view of the substance, and I think on coronavirus, America actually doesn't look that different from the rest of the Western world in what's happened. Um, President Trump has managed them very badly politically. He's seemed indifferent to coronavirus. He's seen hostile to Black Lives Matters, while at the same time, not really associating himself with law and order over looting. So he's sort of got the worst, worst of both worlds. So, and if you look at the polls, Biden was ahead. Then coronavirus, Trump support dropped. Then Black Lives Matter, Biden support rose. And it's been fairly consistent since then. There might be a slight narrowing at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I think simply unpopular, kept himself unpopular, largely for his personal behaviour, and has at the very least dealt politically very badly with coronavirus and Black Lives Matter. And Joe Biden's run quite a good campaign just by not saying very much. When you're ahead, let your opponent lose. And because Trump's unpopular, he needed people to decide Joe Biden was a bad guy. And there just hasn't been enough attention paid to Joe Biden because Trump has been, I think, largely accidentally hogging the limelight. So, um, you know, suppose Trump loses. Um, mm -hmm. Probably a lot of Trump, Trump might not accept that. A lot of Trumpists won't accept it even if he mm -hmm. does. How big a problem will that be? So I think I, so I think there's two questions. So to be clear, I think probably if he loses, he'll try some kind of court case, even if he loses quite badly. He might be set on the night, but he'll probably sue. But if you get to a situation where the US Supreme Court has ruled either its own ruling or it's let the lower court stand, I personally think Trump will, he'll say he's been cheated probably, but he will accept it. If you look at Mr. Trump, he has a very long history of talking a very big game legally and then being very careful. So, for example, when he's been on the stand in court cases for his business dealings, he's suddenly been much more careful in his language. He's never disobeyed a court order in his life. I think that's fairly clear. Um, so I think he'll accept it, even if he doesn't accept it. If there's a clear ruling by Republican um, Supreme Court effectively that he's lost, but there's no way he will have enough support to hold on. So even if he did say, oh, I'm just not resigning, the Supreme Court's robbed me, the fact is he won't have enough support from the military, from the police, from senior Republicans. Like, they, the, the truth is the senior ranks of the Trump administration don't have much respect for him. So to get them to do something, he just doesn't have the personal pull to get them to do something that radical. I remember in 2000, Al Gore, when it came to the Supreme Court, lost the election by one vote in the Supreme Court, in effect. And he said, whilst I strongly disagree with it, I accept the ruling of the Supreme Court. Yeah, so I think Mr. Trump will say probably a more Trumpy version of that. And if he doesn't, it won't matter much, just like it wouldn't have mattered very much if Al Gore had. I should add on the 5-4 ruling, it's worth noting it was arguably 7-2 or in some respects even 9-0. Actually, um, they all agreed the Florida Supreme Court had, um, had uh, um, uh, done stuff that was illegal. Um, the only question was, could they send it back to the lower courts to see if there would be uh, a, a change, whether a new version of counting would work? So it, it, people talk about it being 5 4, but it was 5 4 to immediate shutdown. George Bush has definitely won. Several others actually overturned what the lower courts had done. And that would probably have I, I've ended up with George Bush winning anyway. It just might have taken a bit longer. So 5 4 is a bit misleading for the Bush Gore case. What would the long term consequences of the Trump presidency be? I think in some ways, surprisingly little. 
Um, I think you've seen a radicalization of the Democrats, often in response to Trump. We'll see how long that sticks if he's no longer around. I think by far his most important institutional legacy will be his Supreme Court judge nomination. So we're likely to have a right of centre Supreme Court for decades to come, unless the Democrats pack it. And if the Democrats pack it, that will then weaken the Supreme Court. Like a court that's been packed is not going to have much authority anymore to tell Republicans what they're doing is unconstitutional. Um, I do think it may also have brought the immigration issue into the US. The last few decades, the US has been unusual in Western democracies, and the right of centre party hasn't campaigned on keeping immigration lower. And I think that's probably changing for the medium for long term now. Um, but I think actually, in some ways, you'll be surprised how little impact President Trump's had. He's had very few policy achievements and virtually none that would have happened under another president. Maybe some of the changes in the Middle East with alliance between Israel and the uh, Arab nations and a bit more recognitions of things like Israeli capital will stick. But again, I think in the lens of the American impact of world politics, that's a fairly small beer. Now, the uh, whites without a degree are like the Republican base. Uh, this group is in decline. How much of a long-term demographic problem does the Democratic Party, sorry, Republican Party face? Yeah, it's, it's a good question, that. Um, one thing I should emphasise is that's very new and it's been happening across the Western world, particularly the English-speaking world, that whites without a degree have been becoming a right-wing reservoir. Historically, whether you went to university or not wasn't much of a predictor of how you voted. Trump's the first president, but that was a very big factor. Um, I, yes, the Democratic groups are growing and there's a generation gap, though interestingly it's smaller, for example, than in the UK. Republicans are younger compared to Democrats than Tory voters are compared to Labour voters. Um, I also think on quite a lot of issues, younger voters aren't that left wing, so you'd expect a bit of a balancing. One sign of hope for the Republicans is there's some evidence they're starting to go up among non-white voters. And if that started shifting, and particularly, for example, if African-Americans, a substantial minority instead of a small minority, started voting Republican, that would cause huge problems for Democrats. Um, I would also add the Republican Party, perhaps because in a sense it's the hyper-American party. It's been the party of groups who felt they're like the authentic Americanism throughout its history has always tended to be in demographics of our decline. So in the late 19th century, the groups who voted Democratic, like Catholics, were growing much faster than the Republicans, and it looked like they were doomed, and then actually they got their majority back. So uh, that's been a lot of the issue. Similarly, in the, in the 50s and 60s, Republicans were older. If you're a Republican candidate, you relied on nursing homes for, for your vote. Um, and yet then you got Reagan. So um, while I think demographics are a problem for the Republicans, they're not necessarily going to be fatal. And in a way, it's not a new problem. They've had lots of problems like that before. Um, what will Biden do as president? I, I think domestically, I think it's quite a, a huge amount depends what's happened in the Senate. He has his agenda, which was tacked as moderate in the Democratic primaries, would actually be very radical. So if everything Senate, uh, uh, Vice President Biden has proposed doing became American law, that would transform. It would be like massively increased spending, massively increased the size of the welfare state. It would create legal protections for abortion up to birth in law instead of just on court rulings. Um, it would like probably close down just about every Christian, Jewish or Muslim group mm -hmm. that has issues with homosexuality that isn't a church. So, for example, they wouldn't be able to run adoptions anymore. Um, but, of course, passing it is a different matter. Um, currently, there's a filibuster, which makes most laws hard to pass. And you need a majority of the Senate to get rid of that. You, otherwise, you need 60 votes. And even without the filibuster, obviously, you'd still need to get a majority in the Senate. So a huge amount depends on the composition of the Senate. If, which isn't, is by no means impossible as a Republican Senate, I think he'll have very few achievements. And they'll either be very broadly popular with lots of Republicans or will be Republican achievements he's willing to agree with. Uh, if, on the other hand, he gets 58 or 59, which I think is unlikely but possible, he could really transform America. So a huge amount depends from the United States point of view on the Senate. Do, uh, foreign policy, I think, will get a bit of a return to the Obama era. Maybe somebody who's a bit more wary of wars. So President Obama was quite wary of wars, like President Trump, actually. A lot of talk about multilateralism, but not necessarily that much um, action on it. I think he might be more hostile to the UK than President Trump, who's actually very pro the UK and less sympathetic on the trade deal. But I still think a trade deal might be doable, despite that. Um, so now, supposing Trump is re-elected, he's still almost certain to lose the Senate, even if not by much. If there's a Trump second term, but the, the Democrats control the House and the Senate, how much will that hem Trump in? I slightly disagree with your assumption there. I think 
it's, a lot depends on individual races, so it's unpredictable. I think the Republicans are more likely to hold the Senate because of the map that Trump is to win re-election. Mm-hmm. So actually a re-elected Trump will probably at least start with a Republican Senate. Of course, he might lose it two years later. Um, but I think very little will happen. If they control the Senate, he might be able to appoint an administration that's a bit more comfortable with. So, for example, he's more keen on withdrawing from Afghanistan and Iraq, and he'll continue to appoint conservative judges, though probably there won't be a vacancy on the Supreme Court. There's only one Democrat over 80 um, or left. On the other hand, it, um, and I think he won't even achieve that in both houses, I think there'll be very little policy. He's not good at creating deals, despite his selling point on this. Um, Democrats hate him passionately. So I think you'll just have a continuation of the status quo, really. The notion that American democracy is going to die if President Trump wins re-election, I think is ridiculous. Besides anything else, he just doesn't have the level of support you need to do that. So I think if Trump wins re-election, it'll just be more of the same, broadly speaking. And supposing Biden loses, what lessons will the Democrats learn from that? That's an interesting question. They might learn the lesson they need to be more left-wing. So it might strengthen the left wing of the Democratic Party, who essentially lost in the primary. On the other hand, it also which I think should, in a sense, be the lesson, in my view, be that actually the Electoral College slash the American public is quite right of centre. So they've created too many hostages for, to fortune. But as I say, I think that's unlikely. So, And also, I think it should at least depend a lot how he loses. So if President, if just so does Biden loses, has he lost because he did unexpectedly badly among Hispanics? Has he lost because the white working class have come back to Trump? Like, I think that they, it's quite unlikely he'll lose. But if he loses, how he loses should be important for what lessons one draws. And supposing Trump loses, what lessons should Republicans learn from that? I mean, I think the biggest lesson would be that the notion that Trump shows, so I'm separating this a bit from President Trump's policy distinctions, but, you know, the constant U-turning, the constant firing, the constant Twitter, the saying outrageous things from Twitter no normal politician would say loses you support. And also that the way they manage coronavirus politically, which I again think is basically extension of the Trump show, I think there might be a lot of Republicans who say, particularly elite level, it shows we'd be too anti-immigration, it shows we'd be too tough on, on, on trade, it shows we need to be a bit more like the economist. I think that would be the wrong lesson to learn politically. Whether that policy position is right is a different matter, but I think that would be a mistake. I think what's striking about President Trump is how well he's done politically with all his disadvantages. His basic political appeal of defending welfare for middle class people and opposing immigration is actually quite a popular appeal. And the Republican, and I think future successful Republican presidents will at least in policy be a bit more Trumpian than they used to be. But I doubt they'll have quite the same style. What has Trump's main failing been? I think the main failing, I mean, it's an interesting question, but from a technical point of view, I would say he's been thrown into a very difficult job he has no backgrounds in. He's the only president who doesn't have any political background. The only one, other ones you could argue have been very senior generals, which is actually a very political job. And he hasn't devoted nearly enough attention to learning the job. So he just doesn't know what he's doing. And, you know, I think in a sense, obviously, he ran for president. If you or I were suddenly made president of France, we would really struggle because we don't have the background. But I think you or I would make the effort to try and learn the job. And I just don't think he's made big enough effort on that. Some people say Trump's the worst president ever. Is that true? Well, it depends how you define these things. I think these things were a lot easier to see in hindsight. I think at the risk of hurting Mr. Trump's very uh, large ego... I think he hasn't been important enough. So President Buchanan presided over the beginning of the Civil War. President Wilson presided over the creation of the Federal Reserve, the Versailles Treaty, um, American failure to join the League of Nations, um, segregation of the federal government. So I think they would both be stronger candidates than Mr. Trump, because I think those are just more important negative effects than anything Mr. Trump's achieved. I think in terms of, I think it's a case he's the most incompetent president in that he's been the president who's been least effective at using the device, the powers and success he has to, to um, change politics. But I, I don't think that's quite the same as being the worst president. Now, Kamala Harris, how good or bad a pick is she as a running mate? I thought she was a bad pick in the sense that she's from California. It's a very safe state. She doesn't have a particularly good electoral record. In fact, she barely won for attorney general in California, which, as I say, is a very democratic state, albeit against a very strong opponent. She has various bits of her past and her voting record that are very targetable. She, for example, she's got a very left-wing voting record in the Senate. 
Um, and she, I don't think she infuses that many people. The strongest argument for her politically, I think, was that she's a woman, and at least in America, she's sort of identified as African American. So, as President Obama showed, having an African American candidate could be a real advantage for black turnout. But I, one thing I found striking is the Republicans have been very bad. I mean, there's a limit how much VP picks. Uh, matter, but they'd be very bad at picking up on the things she could have been attacked on. So, for example, she said she'd smoked drugs at a time when she was a prosecutor. That would have been an obvious thing to attack her on. She um, has various kinds of records as prosecutor uh, that she could have been attacked on. And I think it's been a very lazy, not very well thought out Republican campaign, to be blunt. Right. So um, how likely is that Ivanka would try and run as the Republican candidate next I mean, time? She would have a better idea than me. I think there's probably going to be someone from the Trump circle who at least heavily flirt with Ida Donald. Don Jr., who I think might be a stronger candidate in Ivanka because he has better right-wing credentials. Yeah. Um, or Ivanka will, will run. Um, whether they'll win, I think one should be a bit careful. Like, win the nomination or win the president? Win the nomination. I think they, unless President Biden ends up as being very unpopular, which could happen, I think it's going to be very hard to, to be a Trump and win. But I think even the nomination, they should struggle. Don't forget, Jeb Bush was supposed to be the big early favourite. And yeah. Mighty talked up and he got completely annihilated. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out that kind of fate in a form for the Trumps if they ran. I mean, I'm thinking the Republicans will have had enough of Trump if he loses this time. To some degree, and also, um, A, there would be the failures, and B, the general tendency, mirror side of the Democrats, is when they go into opposition to think, actually, we haven't been conservative enough, we betrayed our principles, and obviously Trump was in charge, so he would take some of that responsibility. It's hard to predict, though. We don't really... Uh, uh, as I think I was telling you before the camera came on, it's been over 100 years since a Republican president uh, uh, made a serious effort to come back as president. So uh, it isn't really obvious what they'll do. <laughs> Who's going to win Florida? Very hard to predict. I would kind of guess from the early voting, Trump. And I would be very surprised if Florida isn't to the right of the nation. But I could easily see it go either way. Which states will Biden flip? Uh, if I was absolutely forced to guess, I would guess Michigan, Pennsylvania, Probably Wisconsin, um, North Carolina, um, Arizona, I'm pretty confident in Arizona, maybe Georgia. That would be my right. guess. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about this uh, US election happening on Tuesday? Uh, I, I mean, I think it's obviously in a specialist to say this, but don't exaggerate its importance. Look at the Senate results, not just the presidential results, because they make a huge difference to how much power whoever's president has. Um, Congress matters a great deal. And also pay um, some attention to um, what American news sites are saying. They, uh, they tend to be better on this than British news sites in terms of who's winning and who's losing. Oh, right. Is the British media biased towards the Democrats? Uh, I, I think that's definitely true, but so is the American media. So there isn't much of a difference, but also the media is often less good. So, for example, in 2004, the BBC was talking up that it was close, it, 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 that the people were still queuing to vote so President Bush could still lose. And actually, it was in one of the most Republican areas of America. So mm -hmm. the chances that they, they, these people were queuing up to vote for Bush. <laughs> right. Dr. Packer, thank you so much for your time. Goodbye. Thank you, George.